Okay, as we can see, let's show you a few basics of how the CMM works. Let me pull the probe down to where you can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to give you a couple little simple run-throughs. The joystick, this goes, this is your X. It goes left and right. It says X right here. The Y, just like on a CNC machine, goes in and out. It's got Y right here. The Z is over here. It goes up and down, just like on a CNC machine. The R, if you notice, doesn't do anything. This machine has the ability to plug in a rotary head to where we can rotate things around. We don't have that option right now, but the joystick controls have that option. So, one of the things, if you guys are doing gamers, you can get pretty good at it. You can, rot you can move these all different directions at once. See that? So if we just do X and Y, hold it diagonally, it comes over and up. Now on the CNC machines, we can only control one axis at a time when we're manually jogging it around. This one you can control three axes at one time. So anyway, all right, so one of the other things I want to show you is this is your speed button. Well guys, if people are starting out, they may be a little scared. Let's just put this up here. And we'll want to come down close to it. And they're worried about hitting it. You can actually slow that speed down. You see it? To where... No, if I'm, I'm holding it wide open. And it's only running at 12. Well, I can go to 100 and hold it wide open. So if you're still a little scared when you first start out, you can always slow it down until you get a little comfortable with it. No problem at all. So that's just a speed potentiometer. It determines how fast. Now when we get to write programs, you can actually write in your program what, how fast you want it to go. All right, so let's also look at, um, I'm not sure if it'll do it, press start. Oh, sorry, I've been honed out. We'll go through the startup procedure in another video. Um, in that startup notes, we talked about crashes. So let's look at this probe. Let me pull it up where you can see it. Make it make. So this is your probe. All it's looking for is a small little touch, and it'll trigger it. All right, so it's going to alarm out because it's not moving, so it's kind of make, not really understanding. Let me clear the alarm out on the software. All right. So, I'm not set up in any mode. I'm just moving it around just like a hand jog on a CNC mill. So, just to show you crashes. So, let me go up to the front so you can see it. So if we're coming down, let's pick something that maybe you can see a little bit better. And we're running into it. Do you see it jump back as soon as I touch something? We put it in a measure mode. All right. It knows which direction you're going into it, and it's going to pop back after it triggers and reads, reads that you've triggered it. It's going to pop back in the opposite direction of which way you fed it in. Let's try this side. See it jump back that way? All right, so, and we haven't really got into it, but if you're in the 100 or whatever speed it is, that's your rapid motion, that's just moving around. If you want to actually take a measurement, you have to press this button, this button, or this button. You got three different buttons to put it in measuring mode. 
to where it says, okay, I'm going to take that hit and measure where I'm sitting on the grid. So in measure mode, and what I tell people all the time, don't be, don't be patty caking with it going up. It's not good to do that. Just come over, put it in there, hold it to the floor. If you notice, measure mode is only going to run but so fast. And when you hear it click, let go of it. All right. Drive it wide open, hear it, let go of it. That's in measure mode which I don't have the software set up to actually measure anything. Hold it wide open. When you hear it, let go. If you start patty caking with it, let me come back to the front where maybe you can see it a little bit. If you start patty caking with it, you're not getting a consistent speed of a hit. Just get in the habit, and it takes a little bit of practice, Putting it in measure mode, run it wide open, hear it and let go of it. All right, so we talked about crashes and how it's hard. This machine has so much sensitivity in it to where, uh, just to prove to you, I will put it in rapid mode and hold it wide open. It didn't measure anything but it detected that it had hit something and it stopped. So it's got kind of like, not 100% crash protection, but it's got some crash protection in it. I'll do it again. Now, one thing you don't want to do, it's got some in here, but I don't suggest it. I'm going to put it in measure mode and run it down to take a hit on the top. See, it didn't pop back. It has a lot of crash protection going X and Y, but coming down, you can jam, you can jam this probe up in there and you can damage that. Um, this rotating head, I think the last price was like $15,000. The probe's about 150 bucks a piece. Some of these apparatus up in here, two or three hundred dollars a piece. But you can definitely damage a probe by jamming it up in there, which has run it down on there. Similar to a CNC, you don't want to go down. But even on side to side, it has a lot less, um, a lot more protections in there. Where I don't, don't be afraid to run something in there. You're not driving a huge end mill into a part, taking a big cut. You're just driving a small little tip into the part. Another option it has, Let's see if I can get the camera in here. It has, we don't use it that much, but it has these little probes right here to where you can put them, mount them on whatever part you're working on. I'm gonna lay them right here for right now. And let's come back over here. So if you look on this software, get the camera up there. You see the 21.57? The 21.57 is the, the, the Celsius temperature. All right, what did we say? What did y'all learn in Mac 209 was the optimum QC temperature? 20 degrees, which is um, 68 so, all right, 20 degrees Celsius, 68 Fahrenheit. Well, the machine's set up in Celsius. So it's 21.52. If you bring a part in from the floor and it is extremely hot, you can lay these up against it, mount them to them, or however, and I'm going to sit here and hold them in my hand. You see them? I'm just I'm, I'm gonna hold them. I want you to watch what's happening. 22, 
torn. Let's see, it's going to update in a second. Maybe my hand's not hot enough. 23. 23.57. It's detecting the temperature in my hand, which basically mimics a hot part. And it's running the temperature up. So it's telling the machine that the part is hotter, in this case, my hand, than what you're measuring. So the machine will actually thermal compensate all of the, the volumetric compensation in here. It will compensate for how hot the part is. We we'll got to 24.41. I took my hands off of it. Now we're laying on back. Let's lay this cooler part up on them. And try to cool them back off. Let's see what happens. 24.16, it should start going back down. 23.79. So you can see that it has temperature compensation on this CMM. Um, CMMs I've ran in the past didn't have that. This one's pretty neat. We don't run them, run it that, we don't really use that, but it has that option. So it has temperature compensation for it. So for if you bring in a hot part and you wanna measure it, I don't suggest doing that. I suggest letting the part cool down before you measure it. But anyway, all right, that is it for this video.